Hey guys, Dave Mosher here, producer for Discovery Space at space.discovery.com. That is the Discovery Channel's official website, all about space, and this is your weekly wrap-up, where I run you through the biggest, greatest, awesomest space news, at least according to me, from last week. Uh, if you're on iTunes, you can get to my blog. I'm going to be throwing out a bunch of links at you. It's called Space Disco. That's at blogs.discovery.com forward slash space underscore disco. If you're on YouTube, look to your right, click the More Info button, and uh, there's a link in there for you. Anyway, before we get to the wrap-up of the news, I want to address something. I do read the comments on YouTube, so play nice, watch your language. I will remove or block you um, if I need to. Anyway, uh, you guys all think I look like this guy. That's Shia LaBeouf, and he's a pretty famous actor. Probably all know who he is, but um, I don't really see the resemblance, but if you think I look like an, act like an actor, that's great. I'll, I'll, I'll run with that. Um, and the first bit of news I have for you for last week is the annular eclipse. Okay, annual eclipse, total lunar eclipse, what's the difference? Check out this picture. The moon doesn't really pass in front of the sun. Well, it does, but it doesn't cover it up all the way. So you get this sort of ring of fire. That's what a lot of people like to call it. Looks pretty cool. And uh, if you're in North America, you couldn't see it because it's just not where the sun and moon were at the time it happened. Here's what it looks like sort of on its way. This is the ocean. Looks very scenic little uh, bridge or something right there in front of the sun. Pretty cool. Um, and, okay, so let's go back to this for a second. Why doesn't it cover it up all the way? Well, I don't know if you know this, but the moon goes like this. It's on a, a sort of uh, elliptical orbit. It's not perfectly circular, so it wobbles. And it shrinks and it grows bigger uh, at some points in the month. So it's pretty cool. And uh, a total eclipse, it's all the way close to us, so it's filling up most of the sky that it can and it totally blocks out the sun. When it moves away, you get that ring pattern. So there you go, there's some science for you. Um, next thing I wanna tell you about is, okay, this is actually more of a question. If you had a choice, what telescope would you like to control? Duh, this one, the space, the Hubble Space Telescope. In fact, you can. NASA just launched a contest in March 1st. You vote for one of six images that you want uh, the Hubble Telescope to point at, and they're never, they've never ever been imaged before by Hubble, so they're bound to be amazing. Uh, do check it out. I have a link in my blog. If you're on the blog, look down there. There's a link to that post. And uh, by the way, thanks to Universe Today for the images and stuff on the uh, uh, lunar eclipse, or sorry, the, the solar eclipse. Okay, now this thing. Well, what's wrong with this picture? Um, yeah, that's a $233 million satellite that fell over in uh, 2003. In fact, that's the NOAA and Prime satellite, which is a fancy way of saying it's a big weather monitoring satellite that's going to improve weather forecasts, help us predict climate change, do all that crazy stuff. But yeah, um, some really kind of dumb employees uh, let it tip over in 2003, and that costs about $34 million or, or something to repair. Actually, I think it's way more than that. But anyway, it's finally launching. That's really cool. Really good news because we're going to have better weather forecasts. Uh, science at work. Uh, next thing I want to tell you about is a an, an exoplanet. You know, exoplanets seem to make make it into each one of these video casts that I do, but this one, with an equally weird sounding name as any of the others I've mentioned to you, is HD80606B. Okay, that's a mouthful, but here's what it looks like. In fact, uh, this is its atmosphere sort of twirling around. I don't know if you know this, but this thing is more than 100 light years away from Earth. This is crazy, okay? The fact that we can actually use computers and just a little tiny bit of data from so far away, it's unimaginable and recreate the atmosphere. That's nuts, look at this. And this planet is actually really interesting. So if this was the star, my tip of my finger, this planet kind of does one of these. It just gets really close to it and flings away. And in fact, it gets, it gets the temperatures on this planet, which is a big gas planet, it's about four times heavier than Jupiter. They get up to 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt copper. So that's pretty cool. Uh, sort of, and by the way, that, that sort of path, if you need an analogy, it's like Halley's Comet, you know, sort of wings into the solar system and goes out to the middle of nowhere. Uh, so that's pretty cool, a really hot exoplanet. Uh, my last bit of news for you guys is about this. This is uh, Titan. And Titan is a moon around Saturn. It's pretty cool. Sometimes scientists think it looks like primordial Earth. You know, it's got all these organic compounds. It sort of rains methane and... Uh, all this other weird stuff, but take a look at that. And that's a false color image, by the way. It kind of looks like a butterscotch color. But uh, the big news off of Titan is the Cassini spacecraft has caught it raining uh, on the planet, and they've caught these giant lakes sort of filling up with methane. Uh, this is amazing. Look at this picture. 
So this is 2004, 2004 again, and then 2005 on both sides. And you can see these two little spots they point out here where a lake formed. And this lake, by the way, is four times bigger than Lake Superior. So wrap your head around that. That's a huge freaking lake. And uh, in fact, the rain, the methane rain, you know, these clouds that come down during the summer on this moon uh, around Saturn, which is, you know, millions of miles away, they actually don't form the lakes. The lakes sort of come up from melting methane underneath and it sort of fills up the lake. So it's crazy. Every summer and, and winter, the, these lakes fill up four times bigger than Lake Superior with methane. That's crazy. Anyway, that's your uh, update for this week and thanks for joining.